Hello, this is James at Alleging on the Select Button Forums. And this is Schwer Viper on the SelectButton.net forums. This is me jumping right into the middle of a game on sneaking with a box rush. This is on the Japanese servers, correct? Yeah, that's right. So uh, a little more tolerance for box rush and uh, the sillier side of Metal Gear Online. Box rush really box is an overpowered move in in uh, retrospect, isn't it? I don't know. I always wish that it took off more stamina than it did. I mean, like, what we can see here is clearly the box to annoy and harry all boxes. There's also the fact that you can't unequip it until the charge is actually finished, so there's no, like, cancelling the animation or anything like that. Once you once you yeah. start a box rush, you, you're dedicated to it. Oh, I mean, the scream really says as much. It's a scream simultaneously of horror and also enthusiasm. It's, uh, it's really the thrill of combat right there. Honestly, if you've unlocked box three, you've made it obvious that you're dedicated. Yeah, one of the things that was really neat about Snake as they sort of evolved his playable skill sets was that he got Box Rush uh, as a default skill. I always really liked the Grozny Grad level. It was uh, simultaneously nostalgic, familiar, and also varied. I think the Grozny Grad map, especially the way they tweaked it in Metal Gear Online, is just like one of the best multiplayer maps I've ever played on, really. Those multiple layers, you know, going up in the uh, hangar and walking around on the catwalks. I don't know, it's so big that it can be divided up into little arenas. And there's always something going on in like multiple places on the same map, I guess you could say. A lot of times in a lot of games that you're playing in a map on Metal Gear Online, the attention would focus on one specific junction, one specific set of intersections, and there were always enough open spaces and enough closed spaces that you could sneak through that you could always flank whatever main action was going on and change the way things were going. Yeah, that you always had options. They may not always have worked, but you always had plenty of options for how to approach any situation. That's pretty representative of a lot of my box rush interactions. Charging straight toward an enemy that's firing at me, obviously putting my most vulnerable part of my body like right in the line of their guns, uh, hoping that I make that final piece of contact. And it's, it's beautiful when it happens. To be fair, usually when you do that, you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no cover to be really be had. So it's, you may as well. It does have an element of desperation to it, doesn't it? The one problem I always found when I was had the misfortune of being chosen a snake is I always hesitated. There just is no time we are absolutely safe. It was a much bloodier affair than certainly playing a snake on the first Metal Gear Online. Playing a snake on the first Metal Gear Online was basically just uh, Onigoko. Was that what the Japanese players yeah, called it? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Onigoko, which uh, is a keep away tag. It translates uh, literally as demon tag, so yeah. One of the favored Japanese server game modes was Vamp Onigoko, where everybody would be blue team and Vamp would be red, and everybody would try to run away from Vamp, it would be a rescue game, so that when you get killed, you're dead for good for the rest of the round, and everybody just tries to run away from Vamp. I remember participating in a few of those. This is one of the things that I just loved about Metal Gear Online that makes it uniquely Metal Gear rather than just a shooter that uses necessarily the Metal Gear engine. The cardboard box had so many different uses and that's very embedded in the whole mythology and stuff. It was really the Swiss Army knife of the game. They took away Metal Gear Online 1's usage where like if you equipped the cardboard box and were going uphill, you would go uphill faster, but in I this one that, they took yeah. that out. This never happened very often, but when it did, it was always mind-blowing. Honestly, like, nine times out of ten, it was fantastic because most of the people on the board... <laughs> yes. Sorry, but that won't work this time. Most of the people on the board had no idea what was going on, so they were just sort of, like, sitting there, maybe trying to still screw around post-game. I like how that guy that uh, you were battling just before the timer ran out, he all of a sudden... Exactly as you said, he was panicking, he was like dancing around in place. <laughs> Trying to yes. shoot you or where yes. you were. When the game is over, your bullets just go through the other players without doing any harm. It's just, it's a, it's a, you know, exercise in futility. And then, surprise, they still work. Well, thanks for watching, and see you later. Catch you later.